Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Human Element, how love, faith, and justice can guide 30 by 30 in communities of color. My name is Shauna Edberg. I'm here representing the Hispanic Access Foundation. We're a national nonprofit with the mission to connect Latinos with partners and opportunities to improve lives and create an equitable society. And also welcome to Latino Conservation Week. Every year on the third week of July, we take this space to celebrate Latinos in the outdoors, in the environmental fields, and elevate Latino voices when it comes to conservation and environmental policy. So I hope you enjoy and I hope you spend some time outdoors this week and join the conversation on uh, hashtag Latino Conservation Week. So the premise of my presentation today is that 30 by 30 must be led by communities of color with an eye for love, faith, and justice. And that is because the current biodiversity crisis that we're facing is also a crisis of justice. It is the same thing because we have data from 2020 showing that people of color are three times more likely to be nature deprived than white people. In 2020, the Center for American Progress and Hispanic Access Foundation found that every 30 seconds, a football field's worth of nature is destroyed, is paved over in this country. And where that is happening is in communities of color. So this crisis of lack of access to nature that communities of color are facing is the biodiversity crisis. It is the nature loss crisis. And this is hugely important to our communities because threats to nature are threats to us. It affects our safety, our shelter, economic livelihoods, jobs, the way we get around, our health and well-being. I know I'm preaching to the choir here, but uh, we all rely on what the earth has to live and threatening that is also threatening ourselves. But what that means is that increasing nature access is a really powerful tool for justice for communities of color. Because when we increase access to nature and create, restore, um, preserve nature nearby communities of color, uh, what we're doing is increasing communities' climate resilience by lowering extreme heat, reducing the risks of floods and storms. We're giving more exercise, recreation, and simply breathing fresh air kinds of opportunities. There's less pollution, more economic opportunities, uh, improved quality of children's education, better mental health, and even it impacts the pandemic because uh, studies have found that areas lacking green space in communities of color are the same places that are seeing high COVID-19 spread and severity. So it, and nature is even a solution to this pandemic. And I also want to broaden the conversation a little bit because it's not just about protecting and restoring the nature that we have and making sure that it's near communities of color, although that is definitely step one. Um, but you also have to consider the experience that folks have, if they're actually able to access it, you know, if there's walking paths, facilities, if it's polluted or not, um, if there's an ability to create career pipelines having to do with the management and the protection of that area, education, uh, if there's housing in the area, um, and whether indigenous communities are able to honor their sacred spaces and have their traditional lights on the land that is theirs and has um, always been occupied by them. So love is a really important lever for protecting areas because when you love a place, you're motivated to protect it and you will join this wonderful advocacy community. So just to give a tiny sample, here are some heritage sites of Latinos um, throughout the US. And if we were able to protect all areas important to Latino heritage, to indigenous heritage, to black heritage, to the heritage of all communities of color, I think we'd be in pretty good shape for 30 by 30. Faith, which I know can be an uncomfortable topic for some, but it's important because speaking of faith is a really powerful motivator um, to get folks to understand what we're working on here. We are the stewards of God's creation, um, and that's, that's really powerful. 
Um, and it's also just to show the power of faith communities themselves. Our Por la Creación Faith-Based Alliance was instrumental to getting six national monuments designated in the Obama area. So imagine that kind of power if we were able to also bring it to other uh, faith and communities of color. So given all that, how can we make 30 by 30 just and keep in mind these ideals of, of love and faith and communities and putting communities of color first? Well, we can start by recognizing the intersectional nature of conservation and the fact that you have to work outside conservation and also be talking about other issues, things like policing and voting rights and housing, affordable housing, it all has to do with conservation. And that means that 30 by 30 has to be a whole of government initiative or it's never going to be able to be as comprehensive as it needs to be to achieve these goals. We have to apply Biden's Justice 40 initiative to it um, and make sure that we are considering these environmental justice communities and their needs and their ability to get involved in this work and to have new environmental, or excuse me, um, career opportunities that they previously might not have had. Uh, we have to include equity metrics, things like the nature gap and nature deprivation, environmental justice indicators, climate vulnerability indicators. Um, and this all has to be done with participatory processes with inclusion of communities of color that has to be done slowly, intentionally to build the relationships. Um, and there has to be some funding involved because uh, our organizations that are led by communities of color are less likely to have the kind of funding and time and flexibility allowed to, to get engaged in these types of initiatives. Uh, we have to address not just wild remote areas, but also urban and degraded landscapes, because that's where folks are living and that's where some of the greatest potential is in terms of benefiting both human communities and uh, nature and wild communities. And that also ties into the next point about considering the other 70% because pollution doesn't stay in one place. So conservation can't necessarily just stick to one place either. We have to consider the whole system and the whole geography of this country. Um, and we can't overlook fresh water because that is a crucial issue for bringing pollution from land to sea and also really impacting the health of environmental justice communities. It's really an issue that is a crux for, for so many others. And of course, we have to set the stage for 50 by 50 um, and to think big, dream about what 30 by 30 could be and what our society could be with 30 by 30 and 50 by 50 and also what it could be at a very small level in your household, in your neighborhood. What could all this mean uh, really on a concrete day-to-day -day level for you? So to learn more, you can take a look at our white papers at hispanicaccess.org um, and please Take the time to get outside, enjoy Latino Conservation Week, join the conversation with hashtag Latino Conservation Week, um, and thank you so much for listening.